You are listening to The Unglamorous Life. I'm Celeste. I'm Lauren. And today we're talking about budgeting. So sexy. Isn't that such a <laughs> sexy topic? I can't even do like a sexy voice ever. So, uh, so budgeting is definitely not a sexy topic, but it is important to talk about, especially for really anything personal or business. So how we wanted to structure this one was starting with personal and then moving into how to start your business, like budgeting. And then once you have one, like running it. And we can only speak to our experiences. And we have two very different businesses with like very different scales. But there's similar. Yeah. So every, everyone can relate to budgeting in general. Because if you're like uh, an adult or <laughs> you claim to be like <laughs> us, uh, you have to have a, a grip on your personal budget, you know, even if you're not a business owner or whatever the case is, um, because I can attest to having to learn very quickly how to budget my money when I was in my previous career, because I started making a, a lot of money really fast. And um, it's when, especially when you're young, it's easy to get caught up in spending money on things that you don't need or not saving the right amount of money. Mm -hmm. um, then you turn around and you have taxes and all this stuff. So it taught me a lot about personal budgeting, which in turn then taught me about um, how to budget accordingly to my business in, in each stage of my business. And it's still early. I've, you know, I've only been in business three and a half years. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's all a learning curve, but the different stages will require a different amount. Different amount. Yeah. <laughs> and like the scale of your business too, like how much money each product is, how much money you're bringing in each month. Like that obviously changes things a lot. Like if you're trying to like we'll get into all this, but like if you're running a Facebook ad and you're only making a few thousand dollars, it doesn't make sense to then run a Facebook ad. That's going to be like a thousand if you're only making a few thousand, but if you're making hundreds of thousands, then yeah, it makes sense to kind of put more money into something like that. So we'll get into all that, but we wanted to start kind of with the pillar of personal budgeting and how important that is because I know for myself, I've always had a good grasp on this because, um, so my mom, instilled with me to do like spreadsheets and like have like understand how much money you're spending and that's like the banker in her but well, yeah so it, don't it forget really, to tell everyone your mom's a freaking lifetime banker yeah so, so she understands um a budget and like how important that is and like we like i never understood how people because of that understand how people can just like not know how much money they're spending and like I don't need to know like an exact amount but like having a rough estimate um and like being aware I guess of things like especially like even at the grocery store like some people like literally just don't think about how much money they spend on like food like they'll buy something and like it fluctuates a lot like I'm always looking at prices doesn't matter how much money I make I'm still gonna look at like prices and, like if something's on sale I'm gonna buy that um and, like being conscious of like eating out like if you eat out a lot like that shit adds up so quickly so fast it really so does. First and foremost for like personal budget, I would say it's important to have a grasp on just the basics. Like you have to have somewhere to live and everything that's included with that. So if it's like, you know, water, utilities, some places have like HOA, having that as like your baseline and then, you know, how much money per month is that going to be? Because that's not really going to change. I but, mean, and, and if, if you have a vehicle like your car, well, yeah, car would be next. Like some people have a payment, other people are leasing, other people have paid it off. Mm -hmm. So how much money are you going to spend on your car? And then your car insurance mm -hmm. and then, you know, like roughly how much gas do you need like per month? Because that might fluctuate. But for the most part, most people have like an idea of how many times they fill up. And then I would say what would be the next thing? Like food. So that would be like another important thing. So like food and supplements, like how much money per month are you going to like have? And like be realistic, I think is probably the most important thing with the budget. Because if you're going to tell yourself like, oh, I'm never going to do this. And I'm only going to spend like $50 a week on food. But then you end up spending like 200. Yeah. So it's like, like there's, <laughs> there's no point in, in, set, in saying, setting the bar so low, kn yeah, knowing that knowing you're, you're not going to do it. Right. There's no, you're only hurting yourself and you're like just kind of lying to yourself so for no reason. Yeah. So. Like there's no point in doing that. So like be realistic with your budget. Say, okay, I spend about this much money at the grocery store to like get what I need. And I'm probably going to eat out maybe like twice a week at whatever. Or just what it's it's different for everyone. Like some people eat out a lot more than other people. Some people like have to, quote unquote, for like business and stuff. Some people just choose to. So um, however that looks, like I know for me, like we spend a lot of money on like groceries at like the grocery store because like we obviously eat a lot at home, me and Ryan. So like that's different. Like we eat out every once in a while, but like. Can, can, real quick, just s side note. Can you talk about uh, Ryan, <laughs> what Ryan wants to do 
uh, oh. for your next uh, year supply of meat. Um, so we're probably going to buy a cow that somebody will like raise and like slaughter for us. Um, and then we'll have like a whole cow, I guess, full of meat. Um, but apparently this cow, like it's really cool business model. Like they have a bunch of land and they have cows and they take care of the land by like eating the grass. So they're like grass fed cows. And then you can just buy one and have it when it grows up and you can eat it to me are you gonna give it a name and then like <laughs> no i'm gonna name it and be really like such a dick about like, it so awkward like, like are you guys eating samuel today <laughs> just like take pictures of him <laughs> like, before i make him like my christmas card every year just to send you to <laughs> anyways i'm sorry go um, um but no but like so people like us who like eat a lot and like are very conscious of what we're eating all the time and like especially in a high quantity with like meat that kind of stuff is important for us. So like if Ryan's like, hey, I want to buy a cow, then we, <laughs> then, then I know it's like so fucking ridiculous for like any normal person. But like for anybody who's like a total meathead and like you eat a lot of meat, uh, it, it's probably going to end up saving money if we decide to do it. You know what I mean? Um, but so stuff like that, like you have to, that's obviously throws a curveball into my budget. Well, shit, this month we bought a cow, <laughs> so fuck. fuck. <laughs> Can't go out to Chipotle. To, <laughs> we just bought a cow. Um, so I say what those would be like basics and then to just be alive, like to, to exist. be alive. Like yeah. you have to live somewhere, eat food, Utilities. most likely drive a car. And I mean, unless you live somewhere where you only have public transportation, but like we're in Florida, so that doesn't really exist here. But like if you're up North, like you can get away with that kind of stuff, obviously. Um, but for the most part, you need to get around, you need somewhere to live and then you need food to eat. Outside of that, I think the biggest problem people have with a budget or anything like that is that they try to pretend like they're not going to spend money on other things yeah and, and i mean let's face it and you and i both know i mean we literally talked about it this morning and like last night i was we were talking while we were laying in bed <laughs> we slept in the same bed um <laughs> i was got scrolling really through on the reebok website or adidas website whatever i was on just looking at sneakers and i was like i don't even fucking need sneakers i have like 37 pairs but um, that was really specific <laughs> <laughs> it's like i have actually way more than that but i i'm like such a sneaker head anyways you're like that's three seven with a zero <laughs> <laughs> i'm running out of space in my apartment um so it is like you don't you're like okay well th you know this month i know i'm going to spend money on clothes or shoes um uh, and so this is what i'm going to spend but like you really have to be realistic with that because if the, you're working your whole budget around this um especially if you are somebody that runs your own business you pay yourself you're paying yourself according to you know what you know that you need to live on and what you um want to save and all that. So if you're not realistic with yourself and you blow, you double your budget or whatever every month on clothes or fucking makeup is so <sighs> addictive. We're both addicted to makeup. So and that shit gets really Now, obviously, too. if you don't have the means to buy this, then you're not going to be able to. But if you have money that you could invest other ways into like, whether it's your business or you know, like a savings, like a retirement account, or even if it's like a vacation, like there's things that you have to like budget accordingly for. But if you're always blowing it on like dumb shit and like going out and like, not that I really like do that anymore, but like go out and like spend a bunch of money, like, you know, partying or something, or, you know, like again, clothes, makeup, whatever, or some shit happens like with your car, right? So you do have a car and like, oh, this like $500 thing comes up. You need to like plan for like a little bit of like an oh shit factor. Yeah. Which can then turn into like if something happens with your car that's $500, you're probably not going to go shopping that month, right? Like if you're smart. <laughs> so, you know, but having that kind of cushion in there to like live and just kind of have stuff, I think is realistic for and most people. Not to mention if you have uh, a pet, Mm -hmm. um, they're expensive so that you have to budget that into you kind of have to like do your pets budget like okay what are what are you gonna cost me on food this month you know what is your uh when's the next time i have to take you to the vet am i gonna have to board you or pay someone to watch you while i'm on this trip whether it's for business or vacation or whatever and then um also in case they get sick or say god forbid you, your dog you know breaks his leg or eats something and has to have a, an emergency surgery there you have to be able to say okay shit i wasn't looking to spend this money it sucks but i have it mm -hmm. because yeah. then you're in a, a situation where you have to choose like okay my dog needs surgery and i can't afford it what do i do just you know and that puts you in a really shit situation because like if you're like me your dog is your child your human child so you know that would be a, a really tough spot to be in yeah so you basically have to have your bare necessities and then if you are in the position that you have enough money that you can you know, save more than just like paying your bills, then 
it would be advantageous to have some obviously sitting around for those extra things that come up and just be honest with yourself. Like, okay, if you're spending, if you think that you're overspending on like those extras, then kind of like write it down. Okay. What did I do this month? And then you're like, you know, I really don't need this. And then you can kind of like eliminate the extra stuff, but know that if you do have some extra money, you're probably going to spend it on something. Like so I didn't it, need those three extra denim jackets that I bought. I don't even <laughs> fucking wear them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's definitely true with you. I go through a closet and it'll just be like tags, tags. I, like, ha- oh. I used to have a problem. I'm a lot better now, but I used to just <laughs> buy so much online. And a lot of the stuff I do, it still has tags, but it, if I'm good at anything, it is, is about uh, donating things. Um, oh. And so, shut up. Uh, but no, I mean, I, that, I would, that was a problem for me, but we'll get into that. But I kind of didn't have a grasp for a while, ma- mostly during my marriage, on a budget because mm. there was so much income. And uh, I kind of like lost touch of reality, I guess, because I'd always made my own money and been very careful with my money. And then when I got married, uh, my ex-husband, you know, his business took off and we had we made a lot of money so I wasn't conscious of like how much I was spending because there wasn't have to be I didn't have to be but you should I learned lesson of you should yeah, always be, definitely still because be. there should have been you know more more money saved and more you know more money put into things that are you know set you up better in the future or whatever it is you know in, investing and and I yeah so that's where a majority of like my shopping habits developed was when I was in that comfortable lifestyle where I didn't have to like have worry this, yeah so i mean and it i'm totally open to talk about it like I, it was out of control like i would and i would have the shit i wouldn't even wear because i was always in you know my own gym clothes my clothing line or you know like f- flannels and jean shorts and so like i would never even wear the shit i just liked it and i was like it was a, like a weird addiction mm-hmm. so you have to be honest with yourself about this is on my strange addiction <laughs> next season watch out it's TLC. not like I eat couches or anything <laughs> it's just shopping shopping is not strange <laughs> It is, I guess, if you don't wear it. Well, whatever. That's a different You, podcast. like, frame your clothes. <laughs> this is so cute. I bought this on this day. Uh, a- so <laughs> I think that is kind of, like, your personal budget. And then, again, if you are making in excess of, like, what you need, ideally be smart about investing it. You know, see a financial advisor. Put it away in some kind of funds. Like, I started doing that recently um, within the past few years. And I know how important that is just because, um, right now it doesn't seem like it or like feel like it needs to be, but I know that it will, you know, the earlier you can start investing, the more that it like, though, I mean, the, the I don't want to say double, but it, uh, it like builds on itself a lot faster, the longer then, it's in yeah, the account. So a lot of people, and, and I went through this with my mom, like my mom has never been good with money. And I learned a lot of things of what not to do with my money from my mom and her mistakes. And my mom, like, she luckily she worked for uh the post office for you know so she had a government job and she was in the military so she had a pension yeah she had a pension so she was kind of set up with her retirement but um a lot of people her age and in like my family aunts and uncles and stuff never really like set financially set themselves up for retirement and all those things and not kind of paying for it now so um yeah so you know i'm 31 now but i've been kind of dealing with a financial advisor since like 27 28 and it's uh, you know, every discussion I have with my advisors, like, you know, you're in a really good spot now because you're so young and you can take more risks because you don't need this mm-hmm. money for 30 years or whatever it is. And that's a, that's a whole different, you know, yeah. beast, but it is something so important to start thinking about even, you know, when you're 25, no matter how small the amount is, like it will add more. And like, I'm definitely not a financial advisor or pretend to be, but I, from the the little that I do know, it is very important. So if you have the ability to put away for a retirement, if you don't, because basically how we work, we don't have like a 401k or anything. So like we have to put all that money aside ourselves. So for me, we, you mean business owners? Yes. I meant mostly, I meant us, but yeah, any business owner yeah. has to put that aside. So for me, that's part of my personal budget is, you know, putting money away for, retirement or investment accounts and things like that because nobody else is going to do it for me and then I'm going to be working till I'm dead and then not have any money saved up you know what I mean so that's part of the personal budget for me as well if you already have that taken care of like with your job then you know you might not need to worry about it but for us we definitely do (laughs) it's kind of like oh shit I'm responsible for this it's really weird to think about um and because I'm just like oh I'll, I'll probably always like be working or doing something but like realistically when you're older you're only going to be making so much money or want to work so many hours yeah Yeah, like so i don't want to i don't want to be worried about like oh shit what am i gonna do yeah um and i'd rather invest a couple hundred dollars now a month 
that is like going to grow a lot more. Yeah, it just makes sense. It just makes sense if you if you're able to do if you're it. able to. So that would be personal budget, I think. Yeah. So so knowing all these things about your personal budget really helps set you up for you know creating a system for your your business, like mm-hmm. budgeting for your business. So I think the first part of that is um, so knowing what. So say if you don't have a business and you want to start one is knowing um, what you have to work with. Like, wh- you know, if, is do you have an investor? Like, where's where's your capital coming from? How how are you going to launch this business? And, um, you know, what is your budget to start? And like that is. We we st- we kind of started uh, completely opposite when we started our businesses <laughs> and, as far as where we were. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for me, I had just retired from from. WWE and I had a ton of money saved because I didn't spend money on anything. I was just traveling and wrestling and I, I lived in an apartment and I had already bought my car. And so I had a ton of money saved. And so I had money to invest. Like I had capital. And then, you know, um, the person I married, he had, he had money to invest too. So he invested in, in my company as well. So that wasn't my issue is the, the capital. Um, but it actually was a problem because it didn't make me sit down and structure a budget. So money was being hemorrhaged everywhere because there wasn't this need for like, you know, the, the straps weren't, you know, tight. You know, I had all this room to play with, with, uh, income. Like the the company wasn't profiting, you know, early on, but I had, uh, other income. So to, to keep putting back into the company to, to make it grow, but I didn't have a concept of a concrete budget that made sense for a company that size that also wasn't bring that wasn't me profiting Mm -hmm. so i kind of like started backwards in a way then kind of the opposite of how you started your business right yeah i mean mine started with literally zero dollars and mine is a little bit different because mine's not product based i mean some i do sell some products but most things are my time and experience based so with coaching or anything that's kind of like coaching or consulting is going to be all based on obviously your clients and who's coming to you so in reality I mean, my first client came to me, my first few clients, I didn't have a website. I didn't have a business like LLC. I didn't have any of that. You know, I just was like, oh, I'll do this. You know, like somebody asked me to like be their coach, right? Like that's how I started. So it's a little bit different just based on all of it is my time and experience. So there's no real need for like an overhead or there's no need for somebody to develop products. But once I did need to take that step, like, okay, I have a few clients. I need to make this like actually a business. I had to like buy the LLC and, you know, all that kind of stuff that you, you know, buy when you have a business. And then I was like, okay, I need a website. So I started like super bare bones minimum because I didn't have really a budget to work with. Like I was still in school and I was just doing this as like a part-time gig to kind of like make money a little bit and like learn from it. So I went on GoDaddy where I bought like my website, like domain name, and they had this thing called a website builder. And it was like 75 bucks or something. And I literally made my own website. Like it wasn't anything extravagant, but like you can make your website. When you're starting out, just having like an online business card, quote unquote, Mm -hmm. is really all you need. So I had my website that I made for like under $100. Oh, I got business cards too. So like literally a website and a business card were like 100 bucks. Um, I bought the LLC and like the name and all that. That's probably like another $100, $200, whatever. Um, I can't remember exactly what it is, but um, so that's a few hundred dollars there. And then the rest of it was word of mouth and social media. And I've only run now like one ad on like a book that I have, which is very small and I was just testing it out. But so I've built my business based off of no ads or no like putting money into it to like promote it. So everything has either been through social media. Yeah, the free aspect of social media. Like when I first started, there wasn't even a paid aspect. Um, And now there is, but regardless, (laughs) Um, I understand everything's a business. Like I get it. Um, It kind of sucks a little bit for the algorithm with like Instagram, but I get it. Um, so I can't be too salty. So <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg You're is like, so salty. No, right I'm, now. Re- I'm, I'm really not. Uh, <laughs> he's so smart. So I got to, I got to credit him that way. But so basically you can start it for like a few hundred dollars. If, if you're in my position where it's basically a time consulting coaching type business. And for anyone who's listening, who wants to do that, um, that is like the bare bones to start it. Now to become somebody who's a credible coach, I was in school and I was competing. So if you really want to look at it, I had thousands of dollars invested over in your school multiple years. Yeah. In schools and in competitions. So learning both ways, because that's basically what I do is like combining science and application of, you know, physique 
training and sports um, for non-competitors too, but just in general, like learning about that. So if you really look at all that, I was probably that was lots of thousands of dollars invested yeah. that way. So it's just a different way of looking at it. Um, there's plenty of people who start a coaching business who don't have any of those credentials, which I'll just say it's probably maybe not the best. I'm not saying everyone has to have certain credentials, but having some kind of using someone as a coach besides them looking good in the fitness industry is probably a good idea. <laughs> uh, we'll putting, do a separate podcast. Putting it that. very PC. That's uh, <laughs> the best best answer I can give you. But so yeah, so that was basically my investment, my initial investment that wasn't you know directly related. But starting the business once I'd already had all that was just a few hundred dollars, and then now since then. I have branched out as far as like, I have a few like programs and then, you know, so I, I made those programs and I, I, at first I just had them like on Excel and I like saved them and I was like, okay, here you go. And then I like met with a, you know, web designer guy and then he made it like nice for me. That's a few hundred bucks here and there. Okay. I made a, an ebook. I make up the book. He does all that. And then whatever, you know, so you spend a few hundred dollars here and there to like develop products. Because it, well, you're at a different point. In because your now business. I'm at a different point. So yeah. It, at a certain time, you have to realize, like, okay, this is what I'm sitting on this, and this is like my bare, the bare minimum that I needed to start, and now my business is growing. So it, what do know, I do to grow it more? Yeah, and then it takes money to make money mm -hmm. on, you know, in most cases. So then you have to invest a little bit more on like a more professional looking website. Yeah. And which I just did. <laughs> yeah, and it looks great. Like I, you showed it to me today, and so it, it's knowing when the time is right and sometimes you just never know you just have to be like okay if it's a gut feeling like let's take this to the next level let's go let's improve our website let's improve our products let's up our inventory let's up what we're spending on campaigns so for me totally opposite um i worked backwards so you know i had a lot of capital to start with you know i was using a lot of the resources that my ex-husband had for his company to to grow my company and a lot of the the systems in the uh, shipping platforms and, and the, all of the things that were already being used. And I just piggybacked on them. And so I had all of these things at my fingertips. And, um, you know, I really didn't have a, a concept of how much if my company was to stand alone tomorrow, like how much it would cost me to, to have all of these things that maybe weren't necessary. And, and then, so I kind of ran my business the, the same way for a good like two and a half years. And then in the beginning of 2017, like every, my whole life changed and I, you know, I, I split, I made a split, I split uh, with my, he's my ex-husband now. And then I know I took the company and kind of just restructured everything and actually realized, and I had to hire new employees and I had to, uh, I lost certain uh, systems that were kind of built in place that, you know, I wasn't, I couldn't utilize anymore. And so I was like, oh my God. And, and then I, and I sat down and I looked at the budget and I was like, looking where the company was hemorrhaging money because at that point like it even though it, the social bodies had grown exponentially as far as a brand, brand brand awareness and just you know people in the you know fitness industry mostly knowing what social bodies was and loving the product but it had an it, it was hemorrhaging money in so many places that was so un unnecessary and so it kind of went back to like a bare bones structure and just kind of got my shit together and then stabilized the company and you know basically restructured everything and then now I'm again at a point where I'm like okay we're we're doing good the company's gonna profit this year you know I'm I pay myself a comfortable salary I have you know some full-time employees I have a couple 1099s here and there and I have ambassadors I have all these things I I'm, let me sit down and look at these numbers how much can I, how much more can I invest in my ads and my campaigns and my, um, you know, maybe spokes models or, uh, whatever it is to get to the next level. And I feel like I'm in, I'm just in a good place because I've been in a spot where I had all of this money in the world to play with, but wasn't utilizing it the right way. And to a, to a spot where I didn't have these, this money or resources. Yeah, you had to cut a bunch of stuff which is yeah. understandable like especially when you make such a big and, transition and it was actually the best thing that happened to me because it taught me so much and kind of put me in this like do or die mentality again which i've kind of had my whole life and so I, I feel like i'm just like in a good place now to be smart about investing more but not too much and overdoing it and being like fancy and you you know what i mean because i'll, I'll tell you this much you said that you started your website 
for $75, right? Mm -hmm. When you built your website. Um, I think. And it wasn't a very good website, but it was what I needed at that point. And so building my, my website was over $10,000 to start. And it was really important to me because I, I had a public image, you know, coming from a TV career. So I wanted it to be really good. But just to put that into perspective, like mm -hmm. how much more money that is yeah. and was it completely necessary for that, for the the size of my company, the At way it point, started. Yeah. Right. And it wasn't. So like for me now, I just finished. So I upgraded from that to a better site. And then at the beginning of this year, and then just now, it actually just went live today. Um, I've had a the same site, but like revamped several things that I needed done. And it was, I mean, a lot of hours of work for these guys. Um, so it still looks the same. It's just like basically upgraded and like stuff. It's just like where I needed to be. And um, so I had to, you know, I'm working with like a legitimate company and they, you know, it's like real prices, you know? So I bet if they made my site from scratch, it probably would have been like probably 10 grand for like this type of site. Um, or I don't, I don't know maybe plus or minus some obviously, but you know how much I paid, I know like that kind of stuff gets really expensive. But like when you're in the position that you need your site to work for you and like you can invest that kind of money, then it's important, you know? Yeah. So um, what I found was when I needed to make that transition from like my very first site to like a better site was when I found that the site wasn't working really for me and I was doing more work based on when I was like, man, if I had this, this, and this, this would just be so much easier. Mm -hmm. So I started realizing those things and I figured it out and I was like, okay, that's, that's what I need to do next. And that will make my, my life a lot easier. Um, and when you work in a business like me, when everything is based on my time, time is very important, you yeah. know what I mean? And like reducing, um, back and forth questions and having everything like laid out there now. So if you go on my site now, basically the biggest, the biggest thing for me is, you know, my coaching, my one-on-one -on -one clients. So like when people reach out to me, there's like a questionnaire and it answers, it asks all of these questions that I need to know. Basically, if you answer this thoroughly, I have everything that I need to know. And if I tell you what I think that we should do moving forward, and then if you want to move forward, then we can, I don't need to have 20 emails back and forth. Such a time saver. It's and such, like you said, for you, your, your time is your money. Like that, you know, that's the biggest thing that that's your product. Yeah. Is your time, Basically your people would expertise. reach out to me and like originally just on like the normal contact, you know, contact us button from like GoDaddy. And it was like, Hey, I'm interested in coaching. And then I would have to send them the questionnaire and then send them the price sheet separately and then have to go back and forth through it. So where now the prices are on the website. You have to see it first. Then you see what's included. Then you see the questionnaire. Bam. Everything's there. Yeah. So it's been a huge time saver to it's me. A good, it's a very good investment for you to grow. Um, so I know that we're, we're calling this, um, podcast, the unglamorous life. And so I know this is not completely on topic with like b business budgeting or whatever, but I wanted to go back and briefly talk about, uh, like a super unglamorous moment and oh, an in unglamorous my, budgeting moment. Yeah. <laughs> in <Ooh>. my life. <laughs> so that's even sexier, right? An unglamorous <laughs> budgeting moment. So sexy, so sexual. Uh, Went, like going back to me talking about kind of having to um, go back to bare bones and restructure my company and literally every aspect of it. I also did not, for a brief period of like maybe two and a half months, did not have a place to run my business. So I was shipping um, and I lost employees and, and then I, you know, I gained a couple of really, really great ones. And I was actually shipping out of one of my employees' townhouses for uh, almost three months. So that means like, if you know how much in, uh, per skews I have, how many styles of uh, shorts, leggings, bodysuits, sports bras, t-shirts, if you know how, how many different skews I have, it's a lot. And I have a good amount of inventory. Like, I, you know, I, I sell a good amount of activewear. And so I was literally going to their house, it's their, their house every day and literally running the business and shipping physically out of their house without w just running the computer on our laptops, our phones, and uh, and it was so crazy. How was it even like? How did it hold all the stuff? Um, oh gosh, they like literally their the first floor of their townhouse. There was only like a path to walk, and then like because that you know I I put my inventory in plastic bins, and they they're stackable. So we would it was literally organized by. Uh, cut and then 
so basically by cut and then obviously by sizes and all that stuff. So there, there was a hundred or more bins in their house and it's stacked strategically. So shipping was a bitch and I was doing the shipping as well with my team. And so we were like, you know, we'd print out, all, uh, uh, rate all the orders in the morning, print them out and then put them into categories of how is, how is this going to be easiest to get to these bins? Because you were having to pick up bins pick them, every yeah. time to get to certain, um, products. So it was crazy, but it was very humbling. And, um, it just, it almost made me feel, it was like a reality check. You know, it made me feel good about me physically doing it like the labor and then kind of like being like, okay, this means, you know, I'm willing to do anything for my business for this to survive. And if it means doing this, and obviously I was like super thankful to my employees who were like, it was, it's a couple, um, that live together for allowing me to like run my life out of their home. Cause I also w didn't have a place to live for a few months as well when I was in the initial stages of my divorce and I was sleeping on my mom's couch. So it was like this crazy. And, and if that's not unglamorous, I don't know what is, you know? And, and at that time I was, Ma, the meatloaf, <laughs> Ma, <laughs> you never know what she's doing in there. Um, so yeah, it was crazy, but it was very necessary for me to like look at everything you know, honestly and say, okay, what can I do? What can I afford? How, how am I going to do this? And so that was like a, my unglamorous, uh, period. I mean, it's all, I'm, I'm a mess. It's all unglamorous, but that was like my, something that I think is important for people to hear that it's, um, it's okay to go through those shitty ass things because, uh, typically something really great comes out of them. And, and now you're in a way better place. Yeah, definitely. As far as like how the business is structured and, now you're back, like you said, in a place of growth. Right. And before it was just kind of like surviving. Yeah, it was you a survival I mean? mode for a, long, yeah, like, yeah, for a good amount of time. So And so you survived and now you're thriving. So now you're back in that like growth, I don't want to say mindset, but that growth like part of your business. Right. So um, doing more content again and like having photo shoots and stuff again and like having the new products come out. So like that's really exciting. Like it's, it's cool because I've been around for like, you know, a while now. The, the evolution of it the all. The evolution of everything um, to see how it's like progressed. You know what I mean? Well, so I think that's you really exciting. Thank you. I know you've been a huge, huge part of a lot of it. Oh, we're going to get all sentimental ups. here. All the, all the ups and downs. <laughs> <laughs> um, Y'all don't, don't even know. We'll, we'll leave that off the podcast. don't even but. know. <laughs> um, so what you mentioned, uh, you know, I'm putting out new content more because I, for a while, because I used to put out, I had a, a videographer kind of at my disposal. Full time, yeah. That was Full part time. of the... It, it was a perk. Extra of, stuff, yeah. Yeah. And so I, when I lost that, I was like, okay, you know, any kind of content or videos I want to put out, I'm going to shoot with my iPhone. I'll edit it. Bear, you know, whatever. Just because I had, didn't know what I was going to be able to spend on stuff at that, you know, in that crucial survival mode time. And so now that, you know, I am thriving again, um, I have new products coming out, new, you know, limited edition stuff and the holidays are coming. So I did my first like actual photo shoot video shoot with um models and a, a whole big deal since you know probably since last year and it and i my budget for this was i, I probably spent um a third or less than maybe a fourth of what, what i would would have would have what i've normally have spent for that same amount of um models uh time for the photographer the actual uh you know video content um, the studio, I, I spent so much less and felt so proud of myself and it was my best shoot ever. And so it, it just kind of put everything into perspective. You know, if you, if you do things a smart way, yeah, even the photo shoots that we did last time, like that yeah. was, that was still like, it was just us for like the photo shoot for this. And then we got some like CB, like lifestyle stuff too Yeah, with like me, but like, that was like a whole day and we literally used all clothes that we like owned. Mm hmm. Um, again, some of them had tags on it from Celeste uh, and, but we got, we got use out of it. So it's fine. Um, <laughs> but like we had, we used all stuff that we already had. We did photo, we did photos like inside your house, outside, like at a park, like at the ice cream store. So we, we spent like $5 on ice cream, but, um, <laughs> besides that, like everything and you know, Mace is amazing, but she's like a reasonable yeah, Mace price. Is, Mace is a, our new, basically our new photographer, photographer. for social bodies and she's badass because number one, she's a cool ass chick and she she's she's really she's artistic. very she's very affordable and she's very talented and she's just a fucking badass and like she's fun to be around like there's just like a lot of perks yeah and like there's 
like when you have good chemistry with like the photographer, like it makes everything obviously a lot better. Yeah. So like that whole day was again, like we did everything and like, yeah, it required a little bit more. Like sometimes you go to like high end photo shoots and like, like if you have the budget for it, like they have all the clothes or like you go to all these different places and like mm -hmm. you spend all this money on whatever. But like for the photo shoot you just did, like you filmed most of the stuff and mm -hmm. like now you'll have someone edit it. So you have to pay for that. But like, it's not like having a videographer and then the editing, you know, right. like, so you're saving stuff here and there and it's still getting the message out and it's still like doing it in a good way. Right. So it's all about like balance and kind of it's knowing where you're at. Like yeah, maybe at some point realistic. you'll be able like again, like maybe next year we'll have we'll sit down and you'll have like somebody like film the whole thing and like follow you around. You know what I mean? Like maybe it'll be different then. But like for now, this is like where I'm for where, for where, where I'm at. at this yeah. is what I'm this is what I got. Yeah. Like for me, like with videos and stuff like my whole like YouTube channel is basically just like informative semi like educational videos and like the whole editing, vlogging kind of thing has like never been my deal. So like when I go somewhere and I want to get good footage, um, but I, and I want a video like that, I just don't ever think to do it. I'm just like in the moment and I'm like just doing stuff and like I just don't do well at editing either. Um, so when we travel, a lot of times we'll have like our friend Chad Nutter there. He's amazing. And um, so Paul usually brings him places to like film. And so I'll just like pay him every once in a while to like do a video for me. So like I'm at the place where like every once in a while I can do that. I'm not at the place where I can have someone film and edit all my videos. Like yeah. that's just not realistic. But every once in a while, a few times a year, I can do that. It adds higher quality stuff. It gets like a different image out there. And then, you know, maybe next year I'll have yeah. a different ability, you know. But so it's all about like progressing. Before I wouldn't even be able to think about that. Like oh, paying someone for a video. Oh my gosh, no. Now I'm like, okay, I can do that every once in a yeah. while. Yeah, and it's just because you know where you're at. And, you know, if, is it going to, is this going to turn into... Uh, make, make me money in some way or, you know, help my image or, you know, grow the brand, which right. spreads awareness. Exactly. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> All that shit. All that shit. What would you say your, um, your worst decision or biggest failure? I don't know when I say call it a failure, but the, so far in your business, mm -hmm. the worst decision you've made, um, when it comes to, uh, budget. budget. Yeah. And I don't really look at this as a bad decision, but monetarily, like, we're at a, I don't want to say a stopping point. But so basically, um, we have, like, me and Ryan have a very, like, small, like, graphic t-shirt business. And it's by no means, like, a failure. Like, when I go places, we sell them here and there. But it's not it's not my main focus. So it's not like I'm, like, peddling t-shirts all the time and, like, hustling. <laughs> Out of your you know trunk I mean? or your yeah. car. I'm not just, like, hustling for this, right? <laughs> so we came up with it. And, like, it was like, okay, we have a few graphic tees. We're just going to, like, sell them. And... Some clients want them. When I go places, people want them. It's like, whatever. But for me, as soon as I like invest something, I either like, if I invested money in it, like, and it's all relative, you know, I want it to like do really well, but I just haven't given it like the time or energy that I need. Right. So it's really nobody's fault, but our own. And it was never meant to be like a money maker. Like, oh my God, these graphic tees are going to be making my retirement. Of course not. It was just like a fun little side thing. But if I'm going to do something, I want to make money too. <laughs> so our biggest issue with the shirts, and this just comes down to like where we're at as a budget, is you have to order so many shirts up front in order for it to be like, to make sense. Mm -hmm. So in order to get any kind of price break, you have to order like a ton of shirts. And then, so when we first started ordering, we would just kind of like order small batches. So the shirts were like really expensive per shirt and we're only making like a few dollars. And again, it, it wasn't meant to like make money. It was just meant to like get the brand awareness yeah. out, but it's still kind of like, Oh shit, I made $4 on this and I had to like, you know, yeah. make all these posts and like do all these emails. So when Napoleon dynamite yeah. worked on it, what did he get paid? <laughs> Isn't it like, no, it's like $4. What was it? <laughs> Fuck. I don't know. Never Whatever. mind. Let's pretend it's like $4. That was funny. <laughs> um, and then, so what we, we never had them on a site and because again that was costing money too like in order to put that on a site that was more money so basically like as we've been growing it we've just been growing it really slow and um so it's just like investing a lot of money and then so then we did make a large t-shirt order and then but it still wasn't on a site so everything is done via email so it's just like really slow yeah and whatever so now i finally put the budget together to fix my site also add the t-shirts on the site shameless plug laurenconlin.com you can see the t-shirts that we're talking about um there we go. And, <laughs> and um so now hopefully that that's going to be a lot better you know what i mean so for me it's not really a, a failure but it's definitely like a budgeting thing where we didn't really think it through and we kind of just jumped into it which i think you have to learn from also um so that's kind of 
because for me, a lot of my budgeting stuff, I don't really, my business doesn't cost me that much money. She's just doing exaggerated air, air quotes. Air quotes guys. because the biggest expense I have with my business is traveling. 100%. Yeah, yeah, you do a good amount of traveling. And I just travel a lot. And I do that, again, to spread brand awareness. So it's all stuff that I can afford. But that's really where I get a lot of the the expenses from. So for me, keeping up with my website, you know, I only like buy a new computer every few years, hopefully, <laughs> you know, yeah, or like a new phone or something. Like, so electronic stuff, I don't have any overhead. A lot of it just comes down to like my time. Right. Um, and how I like refrain. No, not ref speaking, I mean, speaking of time, we wasted a solid 25 <laughs> I was minutes like, where are you going with this this morning or actually like just now before the podcast it was probably like 13 15 minutes uh, i don't know we set up a whole <laughs> ring light like a tripod we were first we started with just a selfie i was like dude i haven't posted anything on social media in two days and the selfie like, that's looked important honestly, and i like a camel's ass like okay, we looked so, so bad oh, okay <laughs> So, uh, you know, when you are literally, you know, anybody here, influencer, you own a business or whatever, social media is so fucking important. And I've had such a crazy weekend in like last few days that I didn't, put, I haven't posted anything on my, my personal page. And I run the Celestial Bodies pages or some, some of them. Um, I, I run the Celestial Bodies Instagram page and then all of my personal pages. And, um, so I was like, dude, wait, let's just get a picture together. Because first, we're wearing the uh, matching t-shirts, by the way. Lauren bought us matching unicorn shirts. And, um, you have the budget for these things. We, you know? Yeah, she... she <laughs> it was part of my impulse budget. <laughs> <laughs> she had money set aside for it. Unicorn And tea? so yes. we're matching. And I have, we hadn't posted anything on social, literally. Uh, or I hadn't. And so we set up this whole ring light. Like, tried to do it just with a selfie on our, on our phones first. We both looked like fucking monsters. Beasts. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, let me set up the ring light. Let's like do the whole with the Sony's cause we, we both have Sony's and um, we waste, I mean, did we even get a good picture? I, I was too scared to look at it. I think we got like one decent one and like 16 funny ones. And one was so, like our, just our just boobs, our boobs touching. touching. <laughs> oh my God. Anyways. um, So yeah. So you should also budget your time accordingly. Budget your time. I mean, I feel like that was, we got some good content, so it was worth it. Uh, <laughs> totally worth it. Um, so just to me, for me to like kind of close this out, um, my biggest mistake uh, with budget was it stemming from the initial stages of the way that I ran my business um, in the you know in the beginning, uh, trying to expand too quickly and put, I put out too many SKUs, and so I didn't know how to manage my inventory. So I would I have you know my items my my best sellers, and those would constantly be sold out or you know. I just, I had an inventory problem. I couldn't keep the certain things in stock and I had way too much of other things that didn't necessarily move. And then I wanted to put out new styles and I was kind of just getting ahead of myself. So I ended up with this shitload of inventory that I, because the way that I run things now, um, I, I spend a lot less on my ads and my campaigns and stuff. So stuff doesn't move as fast, but it moves and it, you know, and I profit now, but I'm sitting on all of this inventory, which is never good. You never want to have an excess of inventory. So that's my biggest problem. And I'm right now I'm just kind of in the correction mode of like, okay, how can I do, what specials can I do? You know, what, how can I, you know, basically just move all this stuff. And as a business owner, you do not want to have a shit ton of inventory when, uh, at the end of the year, because you'll end up paying a ton of taxes on it. So that's my kind of big, like, oh shit moment right now so uh but i definitely learned my lesson as far as just uh having a good uh concept of your inventory management like knowing the trends knowing what sells the the fastest how many units you sell of that a month and then planning ahead because i make i custom make all my stuff in the u.s so i uh i have a, about a 10 week lead time before i get you know any any new items or you know any inventory in because it has to be the fabric has to be available. It's going to be cut and sewn and all that stuff and then shipped to me. So uh, really, it's if you run a, a company or have a business where, you know, inventory, and that's most businesses, you know, it's different from your, your business, but um, Lauren is, uh, you know, knowing how to manage your inventory and knowing how to budget and how, when you can expand with new stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's kind of where I think everyone needs to understand like their limitations where they're at um and even though like 
as far as I wouldn't even say like the t-shirts have been a mistake. It's just been like a learning thing, like knowing how much money we can put aside for it. Like that's just like a budgeting issue. It has nothing to do with like right or wrong. Like I can only spend X amount of money on shirts. So we're only going to get X amount of shirts, but then the X amount of shirts are still a high price because you can only buy so many. So it's kind of like a catch 22, but that's just part of the learning curve. I can't mm -hmm. spend $5,000 on t-shirts if I don't know if they're going to sell. Right. Right. So it's just all about like where you're at. And being just, again, realistic. So sometimes you're going to have to buy shirts that are higher priced and then just see how they go or higher inventory and see how it goes, take a little bit less profit and then kind of move forward like afterwards. So that's really, I guess the big learning lesson here is just for all things, personal, starting a business or running your business, having realistic goals on what you're going to spend, what you need to spend. Don't be in excess of that just to be like bougie, but don't fucking be bougie. Don't just be bougie to be bougie. <laughs> um, you know, man, I just got really got thrown off there. Sorry, I, I, so, I threw you off, but you said it. But I just, <laughs> I just uh, emphasized bougie. <laughs> oh, okay, so I guess the big, the big takeaway is uh, don't, don't be bougie. Don't be bougie. Thank you for listening to the Unglamorous Life. Please subscribe to the podcast and leave us any feedback. Go to celestialbodies.com and LaurenConlin.com. And remember, life is unglamorous. <laughs>